Welcome to IGM Guru. IGM Guru is one of the global leading online training and certification provider for IT expert by the skilled IT gurus to help them achieve their professional goals. Start with the factor analysis first that what is the utility of factor analysis and why we use factor analysis technique. Well, first of all, what is, uh, we start with the example. Uh, a researcher wants to find out the expected consequences of COVID-19 on Indian population. He identified several expected consequences of the pandemic by reviewing the published literature on the topic. The factors identified by the researcher are as follows. These are the 10 uh, expected consequences of the pandemic. Okay, increased unemployment, poverty, low industrial growth, rise in prices, reduced savings and investments, emotional disorders, permanent fear in the society, increased health awareness, increased technical knowledge and improved family relationship. So these are the factors which this particular researcher has uh, extracted using uh, the review literature by reading the literature available on COVID-19. Okay, now uh, the question is, ki out of these, uh, a, a small exercise uh, we, we will do, uh, Tara, can you uh, categorize, yeah, can you uh, divide these 10 factors, can you group these 10 factors into broad categories? This is the first exercise we will do. So let's start, uh, only two, two groups we want to construct. Okay, now the, like unemployment, poverty, low industrial growth, prices, savings, okay, emotional disorder. I'm giving you two minutes just to, on, so, the basis of the nature, on the basis of the nature of the factors. You just do what you do. You classify these 10 factors into two categories. I hope. Well, I think uh, I think there's two categories if you look at like sort of emotion, like individual responses versus like maybe more societal factors. Like, mm -hmm. like one to five are things that happen more broadly across society, and six to ten would be things that happen on an individual level. Mm -hmm. Yes. Let's see. See, basically, Tara, it depends upon the opinion and the perception of the researcher that how he or she wants to divide, how he or she wants to categorize the data. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. So this is the uh, categorization I have made. Like uh, in the first category, in the first group, I have put increased unemployment, poverty, rises in pri rise in prices, low industrial growth, and reduced savings and investment. Okay. Yeah. And in the se second group, I have uh, taken emotional disorders, permanent fear, increased health awareness, increased technical knowledge, and improved family. Now the question is, we have to name them, the two groups. Okay. On the basis of the nature of the uh, variables yeah, or, or of the consequences we have selected for our study, we have to name both the groups. Okay, so uh, can you suggest any name for the first group and the second group? Um, well, I would say societal factors and, and then individual factors. But yeah. Okay, uh -huh. right. absolutely. Let, let's see what I have done. I have given. Uh, uh, see, uh, you can see that all the all these factors are related with the economical uh, aspect, financial aspects. So basically, these are showing the economical consequences or the financial consequences of pandemic. Yeah. And uh, the second category, the second group, I have named psychological. Uh, psychological. Okay. Yes. Like disorder, fear increase health awareness, technical knowledge, improved family relationship. So see, uh, uh, you can uh, see, you, it, this is clearly visible that if we group the data, if we group the variables under study as per our opinion, so obviously it will differ from researcher to researcher. See, yeah. your perception was something else, my perception is something else. 
Okay, so uh, whenever we do research, the basic assumption on which we work that we always say that the results of the sample we have taken will be uh, considered as the sample uh, as the results for the population or you can say that we always generalize the sample results for the population okay yeah. this is the basic assumption of every research study especially when we are doing uh, uh, primary data related studies okay so this is a this is a problem which every researcher face because my opinion can differ from you and if third person is there his or her opinion will be different okay so we but uh, we cannot generalize our opinion as a result of the population okay so this is the basic uh, aim of the factor analysis of uh, applying the factor analysis okay so uh, after applying factor analysis technique we can easily generalize the results for the whole population because the results we uh, the factor analysis will give us will be on the basis of the statistical techniques yeah so uh, do you have to have, sorry question mm -hmm. uh, what's what's your sample size that you need to have to do something like this Huh. For factor analysis, uh, like for example, whenever we apply factor analysis, the minimum sample size uh, should be at least 300. 300, okay. Minimum, minimum sample size should be 300. Yeah. Otherwise, you will and not be able to extract the uh, appropriate factors. Yeah, and like some type of random selection of the population too? Huh. That is always uh, uh, recommended that uh, uh, Try to use random sampling whenever as as you want to apply factor yeah. analysis. Okay. So that is recommended. Because uh, see, whenever we apply non-probability sampling techniques, the very first uh, problem which arises is you cannot apply any of the parametric test on non-probability sampling. Like for example, if you are using convenience sampling or snowball sampling, judgmental yeah. sampling, in that case, it is advisable, yeah, it is uh, mentioned in um, books, like you cannot apply parametric test whenever you are working on a non-probability sampling technique. Okay. So it is always advisable whenever you want to conduct a study on, uh, on the basis of uh, parametric tests. In that case, try to use simple random or any of any other probability sampling techniques like for example again see Tara it depends upon uh, the nature of the problem the uh, uh, objective of your study and uh, most importantly the nature of the population on which you are working whether you will be able to apply probability sampling or non probability sampling see the probability sampling techniques are very simple random sampling, sampling, stratified sampling, cluster sampling, multi-state sampling. They all are uh, probability sampling techniques. But the very yeah, first I've heard, condition... I've heard some of them, so I have an idea about them. But... but see, the very first condition of using probability sampling is that you should have the information of all the units of the population the list of all the units of population you should have if you want to apply simple random sampling that's the basic uh, criteria that's that is the basic requirement if you want to go for probability sampling that mm -hmm. you should have knowledge of each and every unit of population so uh, if your population is unknown the units of population are unknown and you can't find, you can't uh, evaluate, you can't uh, explore the units of population in that case, uh, there will be no other option and you have to use one probability sampling techniques only. But in case you have uh, information of all the units of population, in that case only you will be able to apply probability sampling techniques. Yes, uh, any other doubt? No, that's good. Thanks for watching the video. For full course, please visit www.igmguru.com and enroll today.